Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not into thy own understanding. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Next, double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of Great Millstone, the one that taught me the 100% truth according to the Bible, peace, blessings, and safety. To all you sincere Akims, keep pushing, keep believing, keep the faith. Regardless of people here for a bit, just another quick little lesson on who to trust, no, no matter what. We got to constantly meditate upon these scriptures each and every day. You know, because, you know, the enemy is throwing all kind of things at you, telling you to trust in, in whatever, telling you to trust in his technology, his philosophies, you know, his his way, his science, and all this other crap. But but what did the Lord say? So we got to always remember Acts 5 and 29. We ought to obey the most high rather than man. Plus the scripture says, um, cursed is he, you know what I'm saying, the trust of in man. You, we can't be trusting in nothing these heathens say, man, all right? They're not for our benefit. You, you Israelites should know that by now. I mean, look, look at history. Look at look at this track record. Look at Sleazy East's track record, Israel. And tell yourself, tell yourself that you truly need to trust in this man. The man, the man or the woman. Look at that track record, man. Let's get this again, Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust. You look up the definition for the word trust, it goes back to faith. Confidence. A firm belief. See, we got a firm belief system right here. Trusting in Yahweh by Shem Shai. That's a firm belief system. That's that's a, a system that can't fail you and it won't go wrong. Us going on cargo slave ships, that's what happens when you don't trust in the Lord. All right? First one's hired. Last one's fired. That's what happens when you don't trust in the Lord. Eaten by dogs. Hands up. Don't shoot. That's what happens when you don't trust in the Lord. That's the end result of us not trusting in the Lord. Having to beg these heathens for food, jobs, water, a place to stay. So the Lord said, what? Trust in me. Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, all your mind. Because a whole lot of thoughts are going to be popping in your head on what you should do. And how you should go about doing things, do do things your way. What you see the end results of us doing things our way, you see the end results every time, right? It, it turns out bad, right? You leaning into your, us, the Hebrew Israelites, leaning into our own understanding, what does it lead us? What does it leave us flat dead on our asses, right? Every time, right? Let's get it again. Proverbs 3 and 5, trust in the Lord. Yahweh, who the ignorant call God, he is, he exists. And his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, he saves, he delivers, who the England called Jesus. Trust in them with all thine heart, all your mind, and lean not into thy own understanding, man. Don't, don't lean. We can't, we can't lean into our own understanding because guess what? We don't know nothing. The, the Lord knows it all, so why not take heed to what the Lord is saying? Let's get this, though. The Lord said trust in him, right? I'm going to show you according to the Bible who not to trust in. Let's get this. This is... um. Let's see. Let's get so rock. It ain't nothing rehearsed, so just bear with me. I can't type the fastest, so just bear with me. Just bear with me. So rock. 12. Nothing's rehearsed. So rock chapter 12. Remember, the scripture I just read said, trust in the Lord, right? With all In the Apocrypha, also known as Ecclesiasticus, in the Apocrypha. Chapter 12, verse 10, never trust thine enemy. And the Lord already told you who to trust. And now he's telling you, telling us who not to trust. No, no matter what. No matter how good it seems, no matter how sparkly and flashy and gleamy things look, never trust thine enemy. For like his iron rusteth, so is his wickedness like when the hour of temptation come. And this man makes it mandatory that you take that grain of rice. You know, you ain't going to be able to buy or sell without it. But never trust this man. He's going to tell you that, look, you take it, it's going to be all to the good. You're going to have water, you're going to have food, you're going to have a place to stay. Never trust thine enemy. Take this juice, take this, drink that Capri Sun, it's going to make you feel better. Guess what? Never trust thine enemy. 
For like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness, right? Let's jump down. 13. Who would pity a charmer that is bitten with the serpent? You go out playing. We go through this all the time now. You Israelites go out there playing with snakes and you get bit. Who's going to feel sorry for you? Remember, you're playing with a snake, all right? You're playing with a, um, a vicious creature, a vicious beast, all right? A, a, a beastly type of nature, type of man, all right? That, that has no pity for young or old, old or young, you see? So who would pity a charmer that is bitten with this serpent or any such as come nigh wild beasts? You in the jungle, you in the safari, but you don't supposed to be out there by yourself anyway. You out there with a, without a guide, messing around with a ferocious beast. And that's saying, no, the, the, the beast devour you. Who's going to feel sorry for you? You should have known better. We, we, we should know better. We should know by now on who to trust. This word has been spoken for the last 50 something years. There shouldn't be no question on who we need to trust. All I trust. And the Lord hasn't put his spirit on you to even think like that anyway. You see? So let's this jump, this jump down. 16. Remember, uh, Sarah 12 and 16, an enemy speaking sweetly with his lips. Yeah, he's going to make things sound good. You see? He's going to comfort you with smooth words. But in his heart, in his mind, the only thing he's thinking about is war. You can read that Psalms 55. The only thing this man thinking about is war. And knowing that, you know that the trouble, no matter how smooth his words is, you see, his teeth are all white, but they're real, really yellow. You know what I'm saying? You know, he all red in the face. No, come on, man. And no matter if he sends somebody that looks just like you, don't trust them either. Just because somebody look like you, they're, they're working for sleazy. They're working for the enemy. So you don't trust them either. An enemy speaking sweetly with his lips. Because that's the main person sleazy. He's going to send someone that looks like you. Because he already know if he come. Well, the majority of our people are simple as I don't know what, but he know the majority of the time when he come and approach you, you already got your antennas wired up because you already know he on some old BS. So, he's, so nine times out of ten, he's going to send someone that looks like you. Never trust them either. If they don't speak according to this word, there is no light in them. Don't listen to them, right? An enemy speaking sweetly with his lips. But in his heart, meaning his mind, he imagined if how to throw thee into a pit. Same thing. He came to the natives like that with them lying ass words. And they fell for it and got thrown into a pit, a trap. They got trapped up. This devil is thinking about trapping you up. He will weep with his eyes, but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. That, that man loved to see blood. If adversity come upon thee, thou shalt find him there first. And though he pretend to help thee, remember, never trust thine enemy. He's pretending to help you, man. All right? Everything, just, just like that with that Capri Sun. And he's coming with that grain of rice. He's pretending to help us, Israel. You see? And, and it's all vain. Going right back to Lamentations. Lamentations 4 and 17. You see? Going to a people that won't set up to help us, right? It says, and though he pretend to help thee, yet shall he undermine thee. See, Yahweh by Shemel Shai, they're, they're here for us. Not, not this devil, man. As a matter of fact, let's go, let's go, um, what is it, the 14th chapter? Let's go to the 14th chapter right quick. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, all your mind, and lean not into thy own understanding. So Rock chapter 14. Let's see. So Rock chapter 14, verse 5. He that is evil to himself. Remember, why, why would you trust in a man that's evil to himself? Why would you trust in a man that don't do no good to himself? Right? A man that would destroy his own people to get at you. Why would you trust that, man? All right? He that is evil to himself, to whom will he be good? He shall not take pleasures, pleasure in his goods. There is none worse than he that envieth himself. And this is a recompense of his wickedness. And if he doeth good, he doeth it unwillingly. You see? He don't do it because he's just a good person. He's just a righteous man. If he give you some food stamps, give you an apartment, Give you a job, give you a raise. Hey, look, he don't really want to do it. It's a it's a motive behind it all. It's a motive behind it all. And at the last, he would declare his wickedness. Exactly what the Lord just had me say. It's a motive behind it all. If he do good, watch out. 
Keep keep your eyes open, Israel. The scriptures say, deliver us from the violent man, which imagine mischiefs in his heart. The only thing this man thinking about is mischiefs. That, that's all, man. That's it. So, so what we do, we trust in the Lord. We don't lean into our own understanding. He's, he's just said and done, but look, man, that, trusting in the Lord is way it feels better, man. You see, it takes the burden off you, man, for try, trying to just think about it all the time. You know, the, the Lord going to handle it for us, right? Let's get this, Psalms 118 and 8. It is better to trust. It is better, Israel. It ain't no bad thing to trust in the Lord. You living over here in Babylon, and they didn't um, spread that philosophy throughout the four corners of the earth. If you believe in the Lord, something wrong with you. If you believe in the Bible, so something wrong with you, right? Nah. But, but oh yeah, follow me though. Follow me in my nonsense. Follow me in my, I can't say too much. You read between the lines, extrapolate. You know what the prophets of the Lord be talking about, man? You, you, you see what this devil promoting? Look, don't trust in it. Not for one minute. You see? Let's get this again. Psalms 118 and 8. It is better to trust in the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, than to put confidence in man. So don't put your confidence, don't put your faith in man. These heathens and two thirds, man. All right? Let's see what else. Let's see what I'm, I'm just pulling out some scriptures and I'm gonna let it be what it be. Psalms 115 and 11. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. You, you do you fear the Lord? They trust in him. He is their help and their shield. Our protection comes from the Lord. Psalms 91 and 2. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge, that place of hiding, and my fortress. That strong tower, my power in him will I trust. Let's go to, I'm, I'm going to go to um, Sirach right quick once, one more time. Let's go to Sirach one more time. Sirach. Let's see. Yep, Sirach chapter 2, one of my favorites. Like I said before, I'm just hitting some points, then I'm, then I'm going to wrap it up. Sirach chapter 2, verse 10. Look at the generations of old and see, there ever any trust in the Lord? And what's confounded? That's a question. No. Or did ever any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Another no. Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? None. None. For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Who, who, you, sleazy, you think he's full of mercy? No. He shows no mercy. That's why he's going to have judgment without mercy. You see, this devil ain't, ain't showing you no compassion. You see? The Lord says he's full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering, and very pitiful. The Lord sees what we're going through, right? And forgiveth sins and saveth in the time of affliction. That's why we trust in the Lord. And we don't lean into our own understanding. We don't trust in our weapons. We don't trust in no bow. All right? We don't trust in our book smarts, in our street smarts. No, man. We don't trust in none of that. We trust in the Lord. He forgives sins and saveth in the time of affliction. Yeah, our, our power does that. So let's go right back to the trust scriptures. Bear with me. I'm going to bring out a couple more. Then I'm going to wrap it up. Let's see. Uh, matter of fact, I just type it in again. And Lord willing, the elect of the nation of Israel is edified. Just, just trusting in the Lord more and more as we see the day fastly approaching, man. You see? Let's see. Psalm 71 and 1. In thee, O Lord, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, once again, who they ignorantly call God and Jesus, do I put my trust? Let me never, be never, never, ever, ever be put to confusion, meaning put to shame for trusting in the Lord. Never let us be put to shame. Psalms 115 and 9. O Israel, people before us the place, trust thou in the Lord. Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. He is their help and their shield. So we got protection. We got protection. We got a savior. You see? And, and it's Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Let's get this Nahum 1 and 7. This is my last one. Nahum chapter 1, verse 7. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. 
and he know of them that trust in him. So there ain't no faking. And, and the Lord already know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, them Israelites, when all, they trusting in this devil right now, but when all hell break loose, they're going to try to jump ship. The Lord knows you. He sees you. The Lord knows who's, who really trusts in him, man. You, you can't fake it. The Lord already know who's going to jump ship. As soon as this devil start going down, I mean, really, really going down, Israel, two-thirds of our people are going to try to jump ship. <clears throat> so lock they're gonna try to act like they was always on the Lord's side. The Lord's like, nah, man. I I know who really trusts in me. You see? And I'm gonna deliver them. But all you non-believers, the Lord gonna put lightning to your ass, man. This is my last one. Second Samuel chapter 22, verse 31. As for the most high Yahweh, his way is perfect. Trust in a perfect way. You see? Not a corrupt way, a perfect way. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him, right? Look, look, remember, our hope, our salvation is in the name of the Lord. The Lord is perfect in all his ways. No flaws, no mishaps, nothing, man. You see? You see all them scriptures on just trust. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of scriptures on just trusting in the Lord, man. And not leaning into our own understanding. And it's talking to the Israelites. You, you, you see that? 6,830 scriptures on just trusting in the Lord. And, 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 it's, and it's more than that. It's, it's more than that. Let's see. I'm just looking through. Look, there, there they go again. Never trust thine enemy. But I ain't going to be the dead horse, no, I'm saying? You, you see what it is, man. Trusting in the Lord. You see that there it is again. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. Shalom.